The XY Advisor podcast is intended for professional financial advisors. This content is created in partnership with our sponsor, Net Wealth Investments Limited, ABN 85090 569 109, AFSL 230 975, and is limited to publicly available information. Before acting on any general advice, you should consider whether appropriate and obtain financial advice from a qualified financial advisor. XY Advisor does not hold an AFS license and does not provide any financial advice or services or endorse any general advice. If a PDS or IM exists, you should obtain a copy and review it thoroughly before making a decision. Advice Tech. As if it wasn't enough to be across TMDs, Alpha, Beta, Rule of 72 and all the other nuances of financial advice. Now, advisors are expected to be across all the technology options too. And there's so many of them. But never fear, Peter D is here. Join me each week on a journey of discovery through the software and apps on offer for advisors and advice businesses. So let's dive in, fellow advice explorers. This episode is brought to you by NetWealth, market-leading providers of technology, excellent customer support and expertise to help your wealth business thrive. Rated number one for overall satisfaction and value for money by Investment Trends and Chant West's Advised Product of the Year for the last four years, NetWealth is here to support you on your advice technology journey. See wealth differently and visit the website to learn how NetWealth can support your advice and wealth business. Hello and welcome to the XY Advice Tech Podcast. I'm Peter Diamantidis and joining me here today to deep dive into the Think Caddy app is, well, they've been an RSPCA adoptions volunteer, a marketing manager for Australia's largest online construction marketplace, actually understands what SEO means when the rest of us are just nodding and smiling. And I just found out she is a first time podcast guest. So thank you so much for joining me on the show. Sasha Lincoln. (laughs) Thank you, Peter. That is a good introduction. (laughs) (laughs) You are very welcome. Um, Now, I'm very keen to pick your brain about Caddy, but first... I'd like to take a moment to sort of just ease us in and get to know you a bit better as a user of technology. Yeah. What is your most used emoji? Do you use emojis? I do use emojis, yes. They're a great um, space filler when it comes to, you know, texting or or slacking. (laughs) So um, what is my most used? Look, I think it depends on who I'm talking to, but a lot of the time it's the the okay hand. Mm Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, nice. Or you know, a smiley face. Pretty, yeah. pretty boring. Pretty standard. But yeah, they'd probably be my two most used. Yeah, I'm a big fan of the nerdy smiley face. That, yeah, that yeah. perfectly captures me. I feel. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when there's nothing else I can say, I'm like, yep, still a nerd. It's all good. Yeah. <laughs> now, if you had to delete all of the apps off your smartphone and just keep three, which ones do you think you'd keep? Yeah, so this is tricky because I think, especially nowadays, everybody's so reliant on their phones. Mm. Um, but I would have to, I'd have to keep Slack and emails. I think they definitely would be the two I use the most. Mm-hmm. And I really don't think I could get through Friday nights without Uber Eats, so I'm going to keep that one as well. <laughs> <laughs> that's fantastic. That is the first time that's come up, and I've got to say I'm surprised it's the first time it's come up. You've uh, got to, you know, I mean, I could just do the old calling method, but I like tracking, so. Me too. Yeah. And particularly when you can watch the disastrous path they choose. Right? I know, like, yeah. Really? How did you choose that way, you know? Like, I love it. Stalking <laughs> exactly. our food delivery people. Yes. I love it. <laughs> All righty. So let's dive in to Caddy, shall we? So yep. to give everybody a sense, oh, and I should preface this all by saying that myself and my team are Caddy users. So just that. so everybody understands. <laughs> um, but in terms of giving everybody a sense of where it sort of sits, you know, in the overall advice tech space, you know, what category does it fall under and who are you guys normally lined up against if somebody's look at looking at alternatives? Yeah, so um, we are a CPD or a continual professional development platform mm-hmm. um, for financial advisors, um, really any financial professionals that are required to do CPD, uh, you know, whether that's just uh, for ongoing training, um, or a legislative requirement, such as, you know, the phase year requirements. Yep. Um, I mean, in terms of the market and who we'd 
you know, be an alternative to mm. um, the likes of Kaplan. Yep. So uh, they're definitely the biggest player in the market, but we do differ uh, in regards to the fact that we are a technology platform. Okay. Uh, we're not actually an educator. So that's one of the interesting things about Caddy is we don't create our own content, which we can, you know, dive into a little mm. bit more detail. <laughs> interesting. And, and it is a bit of, it, it's a notable difference as a user that um, it's clearly a curation exercise. For you absolutely. guys. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So we aggregate CPD content from, you know, over 200 publishers or, mm-hmm. or SMEs um, and we plug it all into our system and allow advisors to earn their CPD points for consuming that content as a suppose as opposed, I should say, to um, logging in and, you know, having to complete our written content. Yep. Um, you know, we recognize there are so many amazing publishers or creators in the market already yeah. so you know why why can't we allow advisors to get rewarded for that fantastic fantastic and in, and potentially content they might be consuming already anyway so i know there are for as an example podcast episodes on there so the, you know people listening might not actually be getting credit for that in their cpd whereas you guys have some that are already feeding through into the um into the tool yeah Absolutely. And I guess that was one of the core, um, you know, outcomes that we found when we're validating our product with the market was, you know, people are doing CPD day in and out. They're just not getting rewarded for it. So (laughs) we tried to come up with a solution that allows us to, you know, capture that, whether it's something that they've, you know, read or listened to or, you know, watched that day or potentially, um, you know, a week ago, it's fresh in their mind. We're allowing them to still get rewarded for that uh, by coming in and, you know, answering some questions. Perfect. And so then, okay, so therefore the primary user initially I can see like is any financial services professional needing CPD. So that's definitely financial advisors, but it could also be mortgage brokers. Absolutely. Yeah. Mortgage brokers, um, stock brokers. Um, You know, if you've got to do CPD as a part of the RG146 requirement or, Mm -hmm. you know, phase year requirement, um, you can do that through Caddy. You know, we've got power planners who also, you know, complete CPD um, and they're wanting to do the same amount as, advisors that they're working alongside right, okay. so they're able to get that you know that same suite of content through oh Caddy. fantastic okay um and so now you mentioned um off here before we started that in fact uh you got acquired recently well not so when did that happen when did you guys when did Caddy get acquired? yeah so that was uh november 2019 okay um so that was by a company called comply fintech solutions yeah um and it's just a really great fit for you know Caddy. Um, comply they have a suite of you know tech products ultimately Mm -hmm. um that help you know with in the space so you've got things like um advisor bid which is automated distribution of corporate deals um forbidding and electronic bid acceptance Mm -hmm. um their corporate highway uh, empowers access to corporate deals um on liquidity and you know caddy i guess being the e-learning side of things or the cpd side of things it just fits in beautifully with the suite because you've got advisors who are using their products um, day in and out and you're able to you know, meet your CPD through that as well. Perfect. And so I guess from the Caddy team's perspective, that's also given what a bit of oomph behind you and maybe access to other industries or groups that you might not have yet sort of tapped into. Absolutely. And in particular in the stockbroking space, and okay. we do hear this a lot, um, you know, the, the CPD content that out, is out there is very targeted towards financial advisors. Mm-hmm. And so being able to have a dedicated library for, you know, brokers gives them yeah. access to really relevant CPD content, which, um, you know, f- from feedback um, hadn't been the case previously. Yeah, okay. That's fair. And so then aside from sort of full C- CPD, you mentioned power planners, I'm betting that, you know, certain businesses could also use the tool to educate the rest that maybe even support staff depending on their Absolutely. need. Yeah, yep. to keep them across yeah. things. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, even product providers we've got on our platform. Um, so uh, you've got distribution teams or people who are working closely with advisors. It's really about making sure that everyone's on the same page. Um, and, you know, by keeping up with the professional development that advisors are doing, um, it allows them to sort of keep their foot ahead, um, <laughs> you know, <laughs> when, when they are working with these advisors. So that's yeah. great. And I'm betting that um, it must have been an interesting journey for you all with the, I mean, you can 
build an app or a tool that serves, let's just say, advisors with CPD, but there's all sorts of other interested parties in that process, uh, business owners and licensees and things like that. How do you manage that sort of um, sometimes challenging needs or or demands of each role of somebody that could utilise or take advantage of Caddy? Yeah, good question. Well, look, this was all a part of it. Before we even built you know, wrote any code or built any of the product, we spent, I would say, six to 12 months in the market sitting down with advisors, compliance managers, um, licensees or license holders um, to make sure that the product we did build was going to work for each user type. Mm. So it was really a matter of validating and, you know, coming down to um, what the real needs and requirements were. Yeah, going away, building that. And we did, you know, beta testing and getting people on the platform before we'd actually launched it. Um, We made changes as we saw fit and, um, you know, we're continuously um, evolving the product as well because at the end of the day, we've built it for the market (laughs) and we want to be able to make sure that it's a really user-friendly, intuitive platform that, you know, helps advisors, compliance teams, AFSLs, everyone manage their compliance requirements around CPD. Perfect. And so in terms of then who finds it easy to take up Caddy um, versus others, is there, you know, is it mainly, I don't know, self-licensed or small practice or big practice? Like is there any sort of theme to who Caddy fits well with versus others who are maybe either it's, you know, you've struggled to get through the Gargantian <laughs> tech <laughs> process that can be, you know, massive groups or yeah. is there any theme to that? Definitely. And I think that in most tech firms you'll come across, um, there's always that challenge of breaking into the larger businesses. And mm. it's not necessarily the technology, it's typically more the, the change management process. And yeah. so because of that, you know, the smaller groups, self-license or just smaller groups, um, Smaller AFSLs typically have adopted the system a lot easier and a lot mm-hmm. quicker. Um, the way that we have built the system out allows for us to easily onboard groups, you know, as large as possible yep. um, without any major headaches. It's really more that internal change management that I think yep. has been, you know, drives a little bit of resistance. But I must say, over time, where the smaller groups were definitely um, those who we saw picking up the platform a lot quicker and earlier, yep. it's over the years, it's certainly changing and we are starting to see a lot of these larger groups come through, which is fantastic because, you know, we're able to offer a really intuitive solution for their um, CPD. Yeah, perfect. And look, it's um, <laughs> it's always a challenge. Like you say, change management is is the hardest part. It's never actually about the tech, you know. It's yeah, never, exactly. For any of us, for any of us with anything, um, exactly. it's never about the tech. It's it's the change management is natural. Um, but I do think that at the very least, having alternatives is just always a good thing. You know, I think Definitely, that yeah. it, um, a it creates competitive tension, and I think that's that's fantastic. But I I do think that um, the market itself is evolving. You know, it's moving away from you know, massive, massive groups that dominate 99% of the advisors. Exactly. That's shifting and changing and therefore the tools that will get taken up will shift and change. So it's only natural. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. And I think, um, you know, following the Royal Commission and all the legislative changes that came in or we saw a lot of large groups, um, you know, they no longer exist um, and we have got a large, you know, a large number of more self-licensed advisors coming yep. into the market. Um, so you're 100% right. It It is providing that other option. Mm-hmm. Um, and the other thing is really just, you know, technology needs to evolve to stay current and that's what our, our goal is. Our goal yep. is to adapt and we've done so with the legislative changes that we all see come into play, especially when when Phasia came in. Um, And so we had to very quickly, you know, hustle and and change the platform to align with that from a compliance perspective um, to ensure that anyone using the platform was very well aware of what their requirements were and how that could be tracked in our system. So you've got to be agile. You've got to be able to, you know, pivot if needed. And because we are very tech focused, that gives us, you know, the tools to be able to do so. Yeah, that's fantastic. And so in terms of then the content, so we're yeah. curating instead yeah. of creating. Um, yeah. How do you, like, how? 
<laughs> where where are you getting it from? You know, how do you get new channels? Of course, because I'm imagining there's sort of a somebody you find, oh, that's really good content. You somehow onboard them and then you start, you know, getting a consistent content from them. How do you go through that process? Pretty much just that. And one of the other things that we do is we really rely on our clients as well. So we want to know who people are consuming. Um, yep. You know, can we then approach that particular um, content provider? Um, it might be like a subject matter expert in, in a technical uh, yep. area. You know, it, by listening to what our clients' needs are, it allows us to then, you know, pivot the focus for content accordingly. So, as I just mentioned earlier, um, you know, we inherited, I guess, or have grown a lot of the stockbroking um, clientele. Yep. And, you know, it was our mission to go make sure that our stockbroking library was filled with really relevant content for those particular users. Mm. So, you know, we then do the research required and we go build partnerships with content provided or providers or subject matter experts um, in those particular areas. Fantastic. So that does that mean that if there's somebody out there listening and they're <laughs> either a user or planning to become one and they've got something they particularly like as content, I'm going to come up with a random of examples. So Michael Kitzes from the US um, is a fantastic, uh, well, thought leader in the industry yeah. over there. But just as an example, somebody you follow, you read every blog, you you think it's fantastic, then at the very least, they should let you guys know and just say, hey, can you check Ooh. it out? Absolutely. Let us know yeah. because that's the whole point of, you know, curating, right? It's to mm. be able to, to bring everything together and to make it easy for you to, to go in and then complete that all in one space. Okay. So then I'm guessing then that you guys then have the appropriate um, accreditation or whatever is required to then assess um, and, you know, assign points for the various categories and all that sort of stuff. So you do that in-house? Uh, well, it's depending on the content. So, for example, right. if you've got some content that has, you know, been pre-accredited by mm -hmm. one of the associations, then that's great. We can put the accreditation details in. Um, you know, with the legislation, it's 70% needs to be approved by the licensee. Yep. So, you know, you can go through the library prior, um, whatever we've got in our library uh, or our catalogue, I guess. Yeah. Um, you know, that's approved or not approved, but it goes through our content team and it's all goes through a QA process. We make sure that it aligns with the phasier requirements that were yep. set out um, prior to be handing over to the treasury. So it's just ensuring that there are learning outcomes across the content and across the mandatory categories that are listed. Right. And so to sort of complete that sort of process, then I've noticed in doing my CPT, uh, then at the end of, you know, you, you read your article or whatever the thing is you're consuming, you do your, your test questions, and then at the end it's got this little feedback loop that's the smiley faces, you know, frowny face, <laughs> flatty face, and smiley face. Yeah. Um, wh what do you guys do with that feedback? Yeah, so um, that's one thing we wanted to be able to do. Given the fact that we aren't writing the content, we want to make sure that we have got that feedback loop so we can internally manage the content that's – being produced or like being listed on our system, I should say. Yeah. Um, it's very rare, but if we do get like a, a sad face or a sad so smiley face or a <laughs> not so smiley face, however you want to call it, um, it just gives us the ability to then reach out to the publisher, discuss with them why that is. And also when you do rate something negatively in Caddy, you provide a reason as to why. Mm -hmm. So it allows us to just close that feedback loop and ensure that the content quality is meeting the expectations of our um, clients. Yeah. Okay. So, and I'm imagining then, you know, it's, I mean, one frowny face is one thing, but a consistent theme can then give you guys some great feedback on a potential source. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And also with the happy smiley face as well, it really helps indicate what our advisors are loving. Yeah. Um, so sometimes we'll get like a, a sad smiley face and someone might just be like, hey, I noticed a spelling error in this article. So we'll just run up, you know, chase it up with the publisher. Yep. It can be something as minimal as that. Um, yep. Or it can be like, hey, you know, this is a little out of date now because legislation changes occurred. So we then review that. We can either, you know, um, speak with the publisher to adjust the content or we can remove it from the system. Yeah, okay. Um, but typically speaking, the content expires after 12 months in our system anyway. So right. um, we really want to drive relevant content to the market. And so it's, and, and we're adding new content in every week. 
So it's really about staying as relevant as we can and presenting as much content as we can that's relevant to advisors. Um, anything that's older than 12 months typically won't be in the system. Yeah, okay. So in terms of then um, integration, have you got to the point where you guys are integrating with anything else at this point? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So we are integrated completely with um, Comply, which is our parent company, yep. uh, which is really great because, you know, if you're in that system, you can just click on the caddy button and it takes you through without having to log in and log out and, you know, all of that other stuff. <laughs> yeah. um, but we've also built our platform with open API integration capabilities which ultimately means, you know, if you're dealing with your own CRM, um, you can all, like send the, the caddy completion data across to your CRM if that's how you typically want to track it. Um, and then that way you're not having to log in and out of the systems to be able to um, report on how the advisors are tracking with their CPP. Wow. So, okay. So, so if a licensee is really on their game, uses a good CRM to sort of interact with and coordinate with advisors that they look after, then they could be getting that sort of, you know, trigger into the system to go, "Mm, (laughs) somebody hasn't done this for a while or that sort of stuff. Yeah, absolutely. And we do have a number of our clients who do that. Uh, They integrate it with their existing CRM that they spend more time in, which is fine. Mm. Um, More so for reporting and management purposes. Mm. I wouldn't say the advisors do so as much. No. Um, But we also you know, to drive engagement with the platform, um, we send newsletters out, which I'm sure you will have received, where it's a bit of a roundup of CPD content that's been added so that you can jump in and you can just complete it and get some points. Yeah, yeah, uh, which I have. <laughs> <laughs> Although, to be fair, I've actually now got into this habit um, and my poor hairdresser laughed actually last time I was in there where I do this block of it when I go and get my hair cut. And That's he thinks it's hysterical. It is. It is. He thinks it's hysterical because he he feels far more educated now um, <laughs> about finance stuff as he peers over my shoulder <laughs> as I'm reading. So. <laughs> And yeah. that's the beauty of it. I mean, Caddy is a completely mobile responsive platform. Mm. So you can do CPD anywhere on the go. Um, and that was one of the big things we learned when we were validating before we built the product. Uh, in pre-COVID time, I've got to put that disclaimer out there, when people commuted to work mm. and didn't <laughs> you know, work remotely as much. But um, we wanted to be able to give advisors the ability to complete their CPD on the train and to work or on the bus or, you know, how they're commuting or potentially in the car, they might listen to a podcast. So by creating a mobile first platform, it allows advisors to do it anywhere. So, yeah. you know, perfect example when you're at the hairdressers. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I think CPD is one of those tasks that we let, it's actually, well, sorry, it is It is an impost, it is time, and we've all got <laughs> yeah. to acknowledge that, except it's only horrific when it builds up. <laughs> Exactly. If we don't let it build up, then it's, it's manageable. And so exactly. bite-sized chunks, you know, when you're waiting for something or that's, I mean, that's when I do these things is when there's just nothing else really I can do in that time. It's like I've got it on my iPad. I click in and I think, you know, it's powerful to be able to search on time, you know, the the, the length it's going to take, or, you know, all that sort of stuff that just, yeah. hey, I've only got 30 minutes. Is there something I could just knock off? Exactly. So with our filtering functions in the cal- uh, in the content library, you can go in and you can choose, you know, the type of content. So it could be an article or a podcast or a video uh, or the length of content as well. So, okay. you know, oh, I've only got half an hour. So show me only content that's available for this amount of time. But the, right. um, yeah, well, the other thing with that is we're not going to show you content in, in CPD areas where you've already met your goals. Right. So <laughs> let's just say if you've completed nine hours of professionalism and ethics, but you've still got five hours in, you know, client care and practice to complete. Um, We're going to serve you or or display the content on your screen to be more skewed toward the client care and practice because that's a goal you need to hit. Yeah. So the the algorithm that's, you know, built in behind all the content, it's really about delivering relevant content that's going to help you meet your CPD goals because there's nothing more annoying, and I'm sure a lot of people (laughs) will agree, than sitting somewhere, like, you know, consuming something for two hours only to find out you didn't actually need to do it. It's not going to make a difference. (laughs) I'm two hours older, but I haven't managed to knock off anything I needed to knock off. Yeah. Yeah. So we we definitely wanted to make sure that um, we could strip out any of the confusion around that and just make it really obvious and really clear. This is what you've got to do. Here's content that will help you get there. And then off you go. 
And so then if somebody's sort of gone to an event or something external and, you know, they've got emailed the little certificate we all get once we've completed, then is they can then upload that into the system? Absolutely, yes. Yeah. So, um, you know, there are so many conferences and, and great events that are occurring that we might not capture in Caddy. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we've made it really easy with, you know, you just click on the form, um, upload the details and attach the the um, certificate of attendance yep. um, or your activity evidence. And then, uh, you know, if you're a part of a business, you just submit that for approval, which goes directly to your manager, mm-hmm. um, typically someone in compliance um, or, you know, the AFSL holder, yep. and they can review that and make sure it matches up and they can approve that, which automatically will then just track towards your progress. Yeah. And so then, you know, all of that's in one place too. So it's, it's all saved in the one place all together. <laughs> exactly. And it's, it's really easy for anyone to do as well. The form, it's not a really complicated form, which is yeah. great. <laughs> yeah. Um, so you just fill it out. And I think this is actually a feature that solves a lot of headaches for compliance teams because mm-hmm. a lot of the time they're just getting emailed, you know, time and time again with all of these different things that they need to upload for their advisors. Yeah. The advisors can do it really easily from within their own system. Yeah. And they can also then see whether it's been uh, approved um, and tracked against their progress. Yeah. Um, and it's just in their accounts. They really control that a lot more, which is great. Yeah. And so, and you mentioned though, that there's sometimes events you've already got uploaded in there. How does that work? Yeah. So we have uh, an event suite, I guess, in Caddy. Um, and it's really just a notice board of events that are happening in the industry so okay. people can register their interest. Now, uh, you know, some events might be you know, free webinars or you might have like a paid conference that you want to go to. Mm-hmm. Uh, we don't take a clip of anything. It's purely just a notice board. Yep. But what we've done is we've pre-filled that information into Caddy. So once that event date has passed, our system will actually send you a reminder to say, hey, you know, you've indicated that you were interested in going into this event. Did you go? If so, don't forget to upload your CPD certificate. So it's just that extra little prompt that, you know, helps advisors keep on top of it and helps compliance teams from having to follow up. And the auto magic, like we love auto magic, you know, something that... (laughs) Something that's just going to nudge me is fantastic. Yeah. Now, I'm I'm not going to put you on the spot, and well, no, I am. Um, and uh, <laughs> the so X Y have an all PD day now. I actually, know. when we release this, it may just be after that. Um, but so it's that type of thing where it's an event that you're you know you've decided to go to. You guys, um, if it's on your list, will have already you know assessed assess the different points, and so then it's just a matter of confirming it afterwards um, with Absolutely. that certificate. Absolutely, yeah. And I have been meaning to add that one on, so I will get the team to do that. Um, <laughs> yes, and, <laughs> and that's the thing as well, which I think is quite frustrating for some advisors in the industry is. You, if you register for an event, you don't necessarily know what the allocation of PD points will be. Mm. Um, if we have access to that information beforehand, that's fantastic because we can load that up. Yeah. Um, but if not, you know, like if you're going to an association conference, there are so many seminars and sessions that they run. It's kind of impossible to figure out exactly, <laughs> <laughs> you know, how many points you get before. Yeah. Um, so regardless of whether we have that information prior to listing the event or it's something that you can add after, it's really just a couple of steps. You just put in the category and the number of points. Um, but it just it's that pre-filled form. So, you know, it'd be the, the XY um, PD day yep. that would all be pre-filled and then they could just allocate the points that they received along with the certificate. Great. You know, yeah. Because <laughs> it is one of those, it's such a little thing, but it's it's a pain point that I'm sure every advisor listening is like, yeah, uh, I forget to do that too. <laughs> yeah, and forms are painful. So if we can take some of the pain out of putting the form data in, then that's that's what we'll do. <laughs> now, in terms of other sort of ninja level stuff, there was something that I, in fact, only in doing the research for this and like a current user but didn't realise this, is yeah. that, a, say, a business that's on there or even a licensee can publish their own internal training through Caddy and use it as a as that e-learning platform just for their team members. How does that work? Yeah, absolutely. So it's actually structured in a really similar way to how we list, um, you know, external content or the other content. Mm -hmm. Uh, But you have access to your own business library. So whether you're running internal PD days or internal training, you can list that through Caddy, put in some Q&As and then send that out to your advisors to complete as mandatory CPD training. Yeah. Um, 
not only that is if you wanted to use it as more kind of an LMS style tool, yep. you can do so too. So you can just put anything in there. Like it might be policy documents, um, you know, HR announcements, and you can push that out without CPD attached to it. Yep. And you can assign it as a task to your users. So you can say, hey, I'm, you know, we've got a new policy document and I want everyone to go in and review and confirm that they've read and understood. Yep. Um, you just load it in, assign the people who you want it to go to, and then you just hit send and off it goes. <laughs> and, well, that's just amazing. So can you then, can you add your own questions at the end to test understanding? Yes. So any business library content is owned and authored by the business. We don't yep. actually step in and do any of that. Yep. So it's it's completely up to the business what they want to push out. And if they're doing professional development, as I mentioned, you know, 70% needs to be approved by the licensee. Mm. So if they've come up with some internal training um, that they say, yep, this really relates to ethics and here are the learning outcomes from it, then they can actually list that themselves um, in the same sense. It might be some you know, general CPD um, or a PD day that they've run. They can load content in and then you know, send it out to their advisors. And I mean, for you know, listeners out there, like I'm just cogitating this, if we're, you know, onboarding maybe new advisors or even professional year advisors, then to even have things like, you know, videos talking through your investment methodology or, you know, these things that are sort of training, but training specific to advisors, even if it doesn't have the CPD attached, this could be a fabulous way to A, make it structured, deliverable, they can access it anywhere, but it ticks it off, you know, keep the record. I, I love the way that this could bring a bit more structure to the other parts of the training we do with yeah. advice team members yeah definitely and even for new staff it's just great to be able to you know house all of your business documents and you can use that as a bit of an onboarding tool you know if you don't have something like a, a separate lms you can yeah. really use caddy to deliver that to your staff oh it's a great idea um so in terms of then the development path going forward is there anything yeah. specifically i mean you're constantly adding content so that's that's a given is there anything specifically on the radar well yes <laughs> <laughs> that you there's can all, share yeah that one, well, i didn't finish that sentence yet that you can share with us <laughs> look there's always things that we're trying to do um you know to improve the platform and to make it more intuitive um I did touch on that LMS capability just before, mm -hmm. and we're really trying to make that work a lot better um, from a LMS kind of perspective. Yep. So at the moment, it's like you load up your content and you assign it as a task. You know, what if you could load up entire modules as a part right. of the sequence? Then that right, would right, be right. quite cool. So. They're traditional LMS style features, yep. um, but given the business library is a tool that's been heavily used, which, you know, since we've launched it, we do find a lot of our businesses are using it. Yep. Um, it will give us, you know, give us the ability to provide that as an, an additional offering to our clients. And the other thing, like, <laughs> there are so many texts out there, which is fantastic. I love texts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but if you can reduce... I, you know, one, for example, and, you know, if you, or if you've got a technology that can do both, you're not only going to save costs, um, but it's going to make it a lot easier as well for, yeah. you know, to manage things. So rather than having, let's just say, um, you know, a business catalogue or, or, you know, a learning management system that you onboard new staff with, it, it could be really great to be able to do that through the one training platform that you're using, especially, yeah. you know, like Think Caddy in this case. And I think that's the other thing that probably isn't done Super, super well. Um, I now know that, um, for example, uh, one of the platforms recently announced a whole lot of content targeted at admins um, and some content tar targeting uh, professional years sort of um, advisors, but but there isn't a lot for anybody who's not actually an advisor. And so I think, you know, working towards the point where we can tailor some of this content to really get their confidence up about the world they're in, the industry they're in, and and the way we all work together, I think is fabulous because there hasn't been a great deal of that before. Uh, yeah, for them. exactly. And I think having that flexibility in the platform you know, people will, as you mentioned, like the professional year advisors um, or you've got advisors who don't necessarily need to do CPD, but they're, you know, general staff at the business. Mm. Being able to have all of that in one place, being able to, you know, share content across multiple, um, I guess, entities within a business. Yeah. Uh, it's just going to allow the business, I guess, to, you know, up their game with the learning and development 
whether it's a legislative requirement or whether you just want your staff to train up to do that because that's, you know, what industry the business is in. Absolutely. And, and you like, I'm thinking about we, we're constantly doing training and updating everything with our staff. And that's, of course, across, you know, changes to processes and systems exactly. we use and things like that. If that can be all in one place and it's just that what they see is a bit different because they don't need CPD, it's, it's about the other stuff, then, you know, that as a business owner, absolutely that makes me happier because it's everybody's just, this is the place we learn. You know, it's yeah. not about CPD or not. It's just when we're learning stuff, this is where we do it, um, yeah. which I think is really good and it just simplifies things. Yeah, it does. So, I mean, and look, we're always looking at ways to enhance and build out the system to make it better and better. Um, this is just one of the projects that we're working on. Uh, but what we love is, you know, we love talking to our clients and saying, you know, what is it that you want to see or what what's not working as well as you want it to or, or what could you see a little bit better? And really, that's how the system has got to where it is today. Yeah. So back to that business library, that never existed, you, you know, a, a <laughs> couple of years ago. Um, that's something we added because our clients were asking for it. Um, the team management portal as well, you know, the reporting features, we try and make that as simplified and as easy to access as possible. Yep. So you can pull an entire business report in two clicks. Yep. Um, all of the system is built based on our client requirements. Yeah. Yeah. And look, the simplicity is important because so for me, um, what I love is, and I was actually just chatting about it this morning to somebody is, you know, to be able to look into the portal and go, okay, I have 14 weeks left, but I have 18 hours to do. Mm, that's not the maths I'm happy with. You know, I want it to be, you know, I want to bring it down to this so that it's only say an hour per week left in the year, you know, so it just simplifying that sort of mental picture rather than it just being, oh, there's always just so much CPD I've got to do, you know, things that yeah. make it accessible and break it down um, and make it feel achievable achievable is really important with these tools because otherwise people just avoid it and do it all at the end. Absolutely. And having that visual representation is really great as well, I think. So being able to see, oh, hang on, like I have, my progress wheel is not very green, which is yeah. the color that we make them. <laughs> <laughs> I really need to jump in and get that sorted. So um, that visual representation is great too, because you can see without having to read anything, just where you're sitting in your overall goal. Yeah. Yeah. Now, is there anything else we've missed? Did we, have we covered the main parts of the tool? Um, I believe so. I, I, I think, think so. One of the other parts I might point out is, um, you know, we are a relatively new platform in the market. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and what we've done or what we've, you know, built, uh, given that is making that change management easy uh, process as easy as possible. So we've built tools to be able to, you know, import any historical data from whatever system you might have used into Caddy so that it's all in one place. You know, if you do get audited by ASIC or, you know, you've got to produce a whole bunch of um, historical records, yeah. we can, you know, if we've transferred that across, we can then have it all in one place. So you're not having to, you know, go out and figure out, oh, where did I do this in you know, 2017 or where did I do this in 2003 or, you know, it's all just there. <laughs> Look, and it's great to, um, yeah, simplicity all round, right? Just yes. more things being simpler, <laughs> then, you know, it frees up all our bandwidth. All right, Advice Explorers, if you'd like to find out more about ThinkCaddy, then the website link is in the episode show notes along with Sasha's LinkedIn details. So feel free to poke and prod her on LinkedIn and I'm sure she'll connect you with the right person. Um, thank you so much for joining us, Sasha. And look, thank you for making my CPD life easy. Um, in fact, I have been caught doing CPD in major airports all over the world when we were traveling. So... <laughs> So it is super easy to use um, and it has meant it's no longer the chore um, that it used to used to be. So please pass that on to the caddy team because it, it, I am really grateful for that. Oh, thank you so much, Peter. We love hearing that. You know, we want to take the pain out of CPD. So, you know, if we're doing that, that's fantastic. We're doing what we set out to do. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you so much. So are you a current user of caddy? Now, something that I did want to flag that we didn't cover off in the interview is that Sasha has kindly offered a discount for XY members who join up their business or their AFSL. So please do reach out to her if you are curious. But 
I want to know how you find the tool if you've utilized it. So please share in, your insights on the XY community platform. Tag me because I'd love to hear what others think and maybe how you're sort of ninja using the tool so even I can get some ideas. Now, as for my thoughts, I actually have had some messages recently from people um, about you know, tools that we've sort of run through on the podcast, whether that's been, you know, the main interviews or even the Curiosity Corner apps. And, you know, they're sort of excited about the opportunity or the app. However, either they're an employee in a business, um, so they don't feel like they might have as much sway in the decision, or, you know, the use of the tool is sort of determined at a licensee level. You know, and the message sort of invariably goes something like, you know, thanks so much, Peter, for bringing up app ABC to my attention. Um, it sounds like just what we need. It'd be great. Unfortunately, I just don't think I can make the team or the licensee, you know, move away from what they're currently using. Right? That's just a common sort of message. Um, now, there are very good reasons for that um, in, you know, licensee world or even in business world, the decisions we make about tools we use. However, if you find yourself in this position, then just perhaps consider, you know, and, and when you're looking at a tool and it could be, Caddy, it could be anything else, then I'd get you to just think about two things. <laughs> One, you'll never know if they're going to take it up if you don't ask, right? <laughs> and two, you'll be far more successful if you ask well. What I mean by that is if you bother to put together a business case on why either your licensee or your manager or the business owner should look into this tool. Put together feature comparison tables, you know, financials in terms of what it will cost in terms of, you know, in comparison to what a similar tool costs you now. Feedback from users you've spoken to, even other business owners maybe they could talk to about the app. If you're serious about something and you really think it could add value, put some serious effort into pitching the decision makers on what you've found. Look, you may not get a yes, but I guarantee you, you will be much closer than if you never asked. So if you need any input for that or, you know, you want some suggestions or help, please post on the XY community platform, tag me, and I'd love to help you get something across the line that could really benefit the business. Now, as you will now be aware of, you know, Caddy curates content for a niche group of people financial advisors and other financial service pro professionals. So for today's Curiosity Corner app, I thought we might take a look at a tool that is sort of doing the same, but for a different market. Today's tool that caught my eye is the Australian Government Be Connected website. Now you can find it at beconnected.esafety.gov.au. Now Be Connected is an Australian-wide, it's a national initiative, which is sort of looking to empower all Australians to thrive in a digital world. Now, embedded underneath that, when they say all Australians, what they're saying is everybody above digital natives, right? So if you didn't grow up um, with a phone in your hand um, from birth, then this is for you. You know, they're targeting at people where that basically technology is not as natural to them. They use, um, they have resources on the website, including a network of community partners who can offer support to help develop people's digital skills and confidence in digital and, you know, tech and, and the web. Now, this entire endeavor is trying to help people just like our retired clients who are struggling with all the digital demands in today's world. And it really tries to step them through how to go about things. You know, topics covered include internet banking, password managers, MyGov, using Wi-Fi, and even how to edit photos, right? We've just had really great feedback from our clients on it. And if you have someone in your life or clients in your business that are absolutely not in the digital native category, then I'd actually encourage you to point them towards it because I think it could add some real benefit um, for them. Well, that's all we've got for this week. Be sure to subscribe to the podcast so you'll get your advice tech fix automatically sent to you each Friday. And as we head into the silly season, I just wanted to remind you that, that the niche down and scale up 
live masterclass is on in early 2023 and could really set you up to make the year one of serious business transformation. So if you're keen, please reach out to me on LinkedIn to secure your spot in the queue. You can find me at LinkedIn forward slash Peter MD. That's P-E-I-T-A-M-D. Otherwise, I'll look forward to turning up in your earbuds next week. And remember, advice explorers, stay curious. (laughs) 